Jesus' name. Amen.
Prophet Marshall for talking with the audience this morning, who is the head of this ministry, amen. We know that the anointing is here because it flows from the, the head on down. Hallelujah. We want to welcome all of you on social media this morning, those that may be with us for the first time hearing us, those of you who come from all over Germany, Israel, from all over Jamaica, Nigeria, we welcome you on social media. Would you stand? Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Everyone that's been listening, we just trust that one today that uh, we have ears to hear what the Spirit does say unto the church because the Lord is going to speak today. Amen. Amen. One of our ministers will be here about God's word. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, Sister Felicia, for talking to her. Amen. 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 Uh, Friday night miracles, Friday night Bible study and miracle service. Amen. Amen. Which we call it Friday night flow. We've been uh, having a strong teaching on forgiveness wholeheartedly. Being able to release people, release uh, things that you've had in your heart, anything that's concealed, that God will release blessings to you. Amen. So you want to check this out. It's every Friday at uh, Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. Um, by Apostle Samuel Potoki and Prophet Marshall Potoki. Amen. Amen. Every Sunday at 11 a.m. you are here. If you're watching by Facebook Live, we are at 6400 Ivy Lane, Greenville, Maryland, 20770. And that is the Crown Plaza Hotel. You can come and experience God with us. Amen. 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 If you uh, want to join our prayer line or need a prayer, want to build up your prayer life, we have a prayer line that's available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 p.m. Amen. That uh, information will be in the chat, but you can see me after service for the phone number and the passcode. Amen. Amen. Also, we have a uh, ELCC uh, TV YouTube channel. All our services are available on there. You can go back and watch. You can share with your friends. If you're not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment, and share the page, or share the channel. That's ELCC TV. Amen? Amen. Amen. Also, if you uh, need a prayer or have a strong testimony, you can contact us at 301-776-7770. Or 301-776-7770. Or you can email us at info at everlastinglife.org. Amen. If you're watching by Facebook, please don't forget to share the broadcast with your families and your friends. And so it can be a blessing to someone else. Amen. 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 Without further ado, we will have communion service by Pastor Reggie. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. We stand to our feet. Hallelujah. The time we have. Fellowship with the Lord and breaking of the bread, as well as enjoying the cup that represent His blood. Thank you. It's a, it's an honor that we can uh, come to the Lord in communion, and it was done as a memorial unto each and every one of us. So it is a memorial. And it's also done there. He says, often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of the Lord. Thank God for the worship service this morning. I greet everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm Pastor Reggie, and I just will be doing the communion session. Amen. Hallelujah to God be the glory. If you have any comments, can you just go ahead and just open it up to the apostles of the bread? And I just want to just take a minute to just say that this bread represents his body, which was broken for each and every one of us. It was beaten, it was bruised, it was battered, it was cracked, holes was put in. So if you ever get a chance and you buy matzah, it's the Jewish bread, and when you look at it, it's looked like it got bruises in it and holes in it. You have to really see it to understand what I'm saying. And this is the way that they make it. And it's unleavened bread. Amen. Don't have any yeast in it. Neither did Jesus have any yeast in it. He wasn't influenced by man, but he was influenced by God. Amen. So with the God be the glory, we got five points that we'll look back in remembrance and thank Jesus for everything he's done. Everything he's done as he walked these grounds and every miracle that he done, every sign and every wonder, every demon that was cast out, just remember. And we look back and remember that, what he has done. Even when he went to the grave and he died for us and shed his blood and then rose again on the third day, we remember that. But then we also look up and thank God. Because God put a plan together, the blueprint that cannot be copied or duplicated. He did a job and he did it for us because he loved us just that much. And then we look within ourselves and make sure that we don't have any unforgiveness in our heart. Because with 
forgiveness in our heart, even the word say, Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. So we want the Lord to hear our prayer and make sure we don't have anything against anybody. So we're going to stop right here and take a minute and look back and think, is there anyone that you are harping a grudge against or have an offense against so we can get this right? Amen? Amen. Let's take a minute. Then we look around, as the scripture says, through one blood, every person on this earth was created. One blood. That's amazing. It doesn't matter about your complexion, your ethnic background, or where you are geographically located. It doesn't matter. That one blood is for each and every one of us. And then we look forward to the soon return of Jesus Christ. And we can eat and drink this again and do it when he comes. Amen. To God be the glory. So let us take the bread. And it says that as Jesus has took the bread, he said, for I say unto you that I will take this bread that was broken for you. We do this in remembrance of him. So let us take the bread and let us eat it together. And in the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood. Let's go pour it out for me for the remission of sin. So we have to take the cup and we will drink this together. Amen. Amen. Let us go. And with that, they went out with a praise, a worship, a dance, and excitement. So now I'm about to turn it over to all the gladness that we'll have in our selection. And the next voice you'll hear is the one that the wind of God had blew in Amen. with an anointing grace. Amen. Amen. Pastor Delisha will be bringing forth the word in just a few minutes. God be the glory. Are you excited? Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah.
When we go to school, we ask our teachers. On the playground, we ask our friends. When we grow up, we ask for a job. Amen. Before purchasing something, we ask the price. In scripture, it says, ask, and it shall be given to you. What should be given to you? What should be given to me? Well, of course, what we ask for, amen? amen. The Bible tells us if we ask for something, we will receive it. It also says if we ask for something, we may not receive it. Because, for instance, Matthew 7, 9 through 10 says, Or oh, what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? God is teaching us something very important, church. So while I'm speaking, I'm going to ask you to search your heart and make a, take a picture of those things that you've asked for to see if you've received it. And maybe as I'm speaking, a scripture will illuminate in your heart so that you'll know why you have not received what you asked for. When I was born again, and began to study the Bible, I learned that in order to get a good understanding of the Word of God, I should ask the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, and the why questions as I read and study the scripture. So today, I'm going to discuss four points to bring clarity, to bring understanding of Matthew 7, 7. Point number one, what does it mean to ask? What does it mean to ask? Well, the dictionary tells us it is to say something in order to obtain an answer or some information. So when you ask, you are permitting something to come to you. And that thing can be positive or negative. Amen. And I'll express more about that later on. This is not a shouting message. It's a teaching. Amen. Amen. God is preparing this church. Amen. He's prepare, preparing each and every one of us. So, we ask also by the written word or we speak it. The purpose for asking is to obtain an answer or obtain information. Now, Matthew 7, 7, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given to you. What shall be given to you? That which you ask for. Correct? Yes. Amen. Amen. The Lord is teaching us that we are to search our hearts to make sure what we are asking him for is in his will. Amen. What we are asking for will do will you do it to bless others? Will it bless others? As I said before, I'm laying the groundwork for this message right now. Peace. Yes, yes. God says, for everyone that asks, receive. But what you receive can be positive or negative. Remember in Matthew 7, 9 through 10, the father, if the son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? And if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? We learn that we must be specific when we ask. And when we ask, we are allowing what we ask for to come to us, to enter our space. You are given authorization for whatever you are asking for Amen. to come closer and personal in your life. Amen. Stay with me, church. 
So when you ask, you are inviting. You are inviting something good or something bad to come to you. To ask me to allow or to invite or permit or inquire. I will give you an example of something that happened to me. One day, I asked the Lord in my heart, I said, Father, I'd like to get a red pair of sandals. Those things you wear on your feet. I asked him in my heart. I went to work that week, and one of my co-workers came up to me and said, Mrs. Anderson, what size shoes do you wear? And I told her, and she said, we wear the same size. I'm cleaning my closet up. Can I bring some shoes for you? And I said, sure. So she brought the shoes for me. Now remember, I asked in my heart to God, not to man. I didn't speak it. But God sent it to this individual. So I got home, and I opened the bag, and to my surprise, my dismay, there were about eight to nine pairs of red sandals. <laughs> yes, I got what I asked for. I'm going somewhere, yes. I'm going somewhere. Oh dear, I, oh Lord Jesus. <laughs> but the sandals and the shoes that I got they were not my size, my heel size. So what am I saying? I asked and I received, but it was negative. It came into my personal space, but it was negative. We are talking about when we ask, we must be specific. Be careful because you may receive the wrong Thing. In this case, the wrong heel size. I was not specific. I should have said, Lord, I'd like to get red sandals, toes out, sling back, uh, heels no more than two and a half inch heels. But I didn't do that. When we ask ignorantly, we allow or we invite bad things to come into our lives. Unwanted things, or we invite trouble into our lives. God is going somewhere with this. Ephesians 4, 18 says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. I was not specific when I asked for red sandals. So the Bible calls it being ignorant. Again and again, church, we must be careful what we ask for because asking can be positive or negative. Amen. A bad or good thing can come to us. Yes. So it takes me to my second point. What do you ask for? What do we ask for? Asking can also be to inquire about someone, about something, about school, the classes we are going to be taking, the cost or the price of an item. When we inquire, we are desiring information or an answer when you do so. You are opening up yourself to any kind of possibility, whether good or bad. When you ask, you are seeking to have something manifest, come to your life. When Holy Spirit did me in Matthew 7, 7, I thought, 
This looked pretty simple. However, as I began to study and prepare this message, I realized it's not as simple as I thought, but it is thought provoking. Amen. Church, are you with me? Amen. Are you learning that you are to be careful what you're asking for? Amen. In the book of Mark, Mark 11, verse 24, Jesus says this. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask, when you pray and believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask, hmm, whatever I ask for, whatever I desire for life can come to me at an instant. So, what are we asking for? We are asking for all things. Second Peter 1, 3 says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I cannot say it enough. Think about what you are asking before you ask. Mm. Give it serious thought. Amen. When we ask, we are asking for all things that pertain to life and godliness. I'm going somewhere. We are asking for things, all things that pertain to life and godliness, such as wisdom, spiritual growth, increase in discernment, a husband, a wife, a baby, a job, a house, a car, yes, financial increase. The list goes on and on. We ask for so many things. Second Corinthians 9, 8 tells us, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have an all-sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. That's what the Word of God says. So I hope you are thinking in your mind and you're making that list of the things you've asked for that you haven't yet received. So when we ask for anything that is for life and godliness, it will come to us. If you have asked and not gotten an answer, then I would like to know who have you been talking to? Which leads me to my third point. Who have you been asking? James 1, 5 and 17 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Amen. James 1.17 then tells us, every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light with whom there is no variation of shadow of turning. Who have we been asking? Who have we been talking to? Is there something lacking in you, causing you to do things or go places that God did not send you? What certain things on TV, on the computer, are you involved in? It may seem as though you are you can't seem to get out of it. My question to you, again, who are you asking for help? Who are you talking to?
Let me tell you, church, there is a posture you must take to act in order to receive the result for what you ask. We have to make sure we are asking from the right person. Hallelujah. When we ask the God of the Bible, we have a guarantee that it will be given to us. How is that possible, Pastor Delicia? Well, he says right here in his word. James 1.17 tells me, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and it comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow of turning, or shadow of turning. What you ask for does not come from your friends, your boss, your spouse, Amen. your children. Amen. No, it comes straight from the Father Amen. of God. Amen. Straight from the throne of God. So when we ask, we are to ask God Almighty. Amen. Jehovah is his name. El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. Adonai, our sovereign Lord and Savior. Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh. The songwriter says, Yahweh, 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 your way, your way, your way. You know that song here? We ask Yahweh, God Almighty. Hallelujah. My question to you is, are you sure it is God whom you've been asking, whom you've been talking to. I ask you to make a list, so bear that in mind. Many people ask mother, father, boss, themselves, Satan, and they think that they are asking God. I want us, when we leave this place today, is to not think we are asking God. But we are asking, we are knowing yes. that we are asking the true and living God. Amen. Because he already says every good gift comes from above. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you ask the Father of light, with whom there is no variation, the one who was, who is, and is to come, the everlasting king, then we will have it. We put so much emphasis on the lies of the enemy, causing us to miss our blessing. Hallelujah. Hear me, church. You have not received you have, or you have received negative, ne a negative response because one, you didn't ask the God of the universe, and two, you were not specific with your asking, like I was with those sandals. Hmm. Oh, Father in heaven. Timothy 6.17 tells us, command those who are rich in, his, in this present age, not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, yes. but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Yes. Not some things, but all things to enjoy. My brothers and sisters, be careful who you're asking for help. Hmm. Be careful who you are asking for help. Amen. Amen. Another song. <laughs> we put our trust 
prayed for a car, maybe I'll get it. No, if you pray for something, you are asking God, so why are you doubting? We do this over and over and over, and that's why I'm standing before you today to let you know. You pray, and you believe, and you keep going. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And if he said it, he will do it. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. James 1, 5 through 7 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. There is that dirty word again, faith. <laughs> Let him ask in faith without doubting. Oh, God of heaven, help us today, Lord Jesus. Help us to stop doubting you. For he who doubts, hallelujah, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. We are not supposing. Yeah, I asked him, I suppose he's going to give it to me. No! That's doubting. Amen. My God. If I do not ask in faith, then I will not receive. Asking in faith means you are not just conscious of what you're asking for, but you are conscious of who you are asking or talking to. So it's not just about what you're asking for, but you are conscious of this God of the universe who has already said that he will give to us liberally. He will give what we ask. Yeah. Glory to God. We have to know that we are talking to Yahweh, Jehovah, yeah. Almighty God, the one who was, yeah. who is, and is to come. Yeah. We have to know, church, yeah. that we are to ask in faith and yeah. not doubt him. Yeah. When we ask, we put test, we put to the test God's ability, his character, his integrity. We must believe him when we ask. We must have faith to believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father to his children. And I say to his children. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make good? Hmm. Most people do not know how to ask in faith. They are hoping what they ask for, God will respond. So they are hoping, okay. I ask, wait, I'm hoping he's going to respond. No, church, that's doubting. We must ask believing. Remember what you ask. Remember, when you ask, you are touching the heart of God, Amen. his integrity. We have the Bible, the blueprint, his manifesto, his integrity. Yes. God only does what he has said he would do. Amen. Then he will do it. I'm going somewhere. The point, if you don't hear anything else, I want you to hear this today, church. Many believers are not receiving what they ask for because they ask amiss. They ask doubting and not in faith. We must understand when we go to God Almighty, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who was and is and is to come, the one who neither slumber nor sleep, the one who paid the price for our sins, 
the one who knew us before we were in our mother's womb. Amen. The one who knows the beginning from the end. Yes. The one who delivers you from destruction. The one who chose you yes. and appointed you yes. to bear good fruit. The one who prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Oh, you get the picture now, church, when you take petition to him. Expect him to respond. Yeah. Expect to receive an answer. Check it out in the Bible. If he said it, he will do it. Amen. So you have a need. My God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. My God. It is up to us this is the take home point. It is up to us when we ask, we must ask for that which is in Genesis to Revelation. Because that's the only way God operates. You gotta ask what's in the Bible. Well, I'm asking for some sugar plum right now. Is that in the Bible? Read and find a scripture. <laughs> I was thinking of <laughs> Whatever you're asking for, I, I'm thinking back in Trinidad. <laughs> Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. Find a scripture for what you are desiring. And based on his word, he will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint me. Hallelujah. I told you this was not a shouting message. But it was a word that I needed to bring forth. Because he placed it in my heart weeks ago. I will stop here and we will continue next week. Amen. I don't know how far into next week, but we will continue. So remember, what does it mean to ask? What do you ask for? Who do you ask? And how do you ask? Amen.
and would like to be saved today. Or maybe you started off leaning on Jesus, but for whatever reason, you fell off and you want to return. He's married to the backslider. Come forth, we will pray with you. Or maybe you're looking for a church home. You haven't been able to find that special church. Well, God dwells here. This is a good place for you to take hold. So today, if you do not know Jesus, come. If you're in a backslidden state, come. If you just need prayer, come. Oh, Jesus is waiting. He says, learning to read. I'm learning to read. Learning to read.
we are going to continue worshiping the Lord with the giving of our tithes and our prayers.